All right, welcome everyone. Uh, this is a technical presentation on the Lightning Network. Uh, these slides are available under a Creative Commons attribution share like license, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner. And you can download them uh, at any time, including right now, and look at them on your own system. Um, and of course, you can also uh, use them for mashups uh, and uh, reuse them in any way you want under the Creative Commons license. If you want to learn more about the things I'm going to talk about today, uh, there are two books that are available, again, under Creative Commons license. Um, Mastering Bitcoin Second Edition, which you can find on GitHub uh, in the Bitcoin Book Repository and Organization. And uh, you can read the book. Uh, most of the material today is uh, from chapter 12, um, but sections of the material are also from chapters uh, four and five. As we're looking at this book today, I'm also working on my next book, uh, Mastering the Lightning Network, again from O'Reilly Media, which is also being developed under an open source license. Um, and you can find that uh, online. Uh, the first couple of chapters have been drafted. If you want additional information about the Lightning Network and uh, like to watch videos instead of uh, reading a book, uh, perhaps you might want to check out the YouTube channel. Um, and I have a link here where you can find um, 40 videos that are ad-free, uh, specifically on the topic of the Lightning Network from my Q&A series. Uh, you can also find uh, 500 other videos that are not about Lightning necessarily. So first of all, let's, uh, let's quickly review how a Bitcoin transaction is structured. A uh, Bitcoin transaction consists of two parts, a uh, array or list of inputs, uh, and inputs are uh, previously created uh, amounts of Bitcoin with spending conditions that are defined in a script that must be satisfied. Uh, the most common, of course, being um, the need for a digital signature. That's uh, the most common script, uh, which is a very simple Bitcoin uh, script and a very simple Bitcoin transaction. So if you wanted to send money to someone, you would take an input that has been recorded on the blockchain. You would uh, take its Bitcoin script that sets the spending conditions. And if that Bitcoin script re required a digital signature, simply a digital signature corresponding to that address, uh, you would fulfill it um, and construct a transaction using those inputs. And then you can use that same transaction to produce outputs. And the outputs are the actual payments, where the money is going. So where the money is coming from, inputs. Where the money is going, outputs. And you can have um, several inputs and several outputs. Um, when you construct outputs in a Bitcoin transactions, those later become inputs for a future transaction, and so on and so forth, chaining them all together. So in your outputs, you specify the conditions that are required to spend that output. Another important uh, consideration is that in Bitcoin transactions, um, any output that you have available to spend must be spent in its entirety. You can't spend half of it. So uh, another common feature in Bitcoin is that if the input you have um, to spend is larger than the payment you want to make, you create a change. And the way you create change is by having an additional output in the transaction that returns money to your own wallet or address. So those are the transaction basics. Um, it's often confusing uh, to people who are new to Bitcoin that uh, transactions are structured in this way uh, using uh, this mechanism of inputs and outputs. Uh, but that's how Bitcoin works. Uh, it's distinct from some of the other blockchains. For example, Ethereum works in a very different way using account balances. 